Hey, Stewart's Chapel, this is Don Pearson and Don Counts behind the camera. We're at the Catlets, and this is Tuesday's devotion. We're continuing our discussion about Christians and their relationship with the lost. Um, if you're just getting in here, you need to go back to Thursday's devotion and catch up. And so I've been giving little things that I need to, or I remind myself as in in my relationships with the lost. And so today I want to talk about be wise. Be wise. I want you to look at Matthew chapter 10 verse 16. And Jesus said, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Be aware of men. For they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. Again, it's very obvious that the wolves that he's talking about there are the Pharisees, Sadducees, the high priests, the extremely religious. But as time progresses to this day, it hasn't always been the religious that seek to devour us. There's all kinds of lost individuals that um, seek to devour God's people. There's quite a bit of stuff in this passage, and I'm not going to go through all of it. I, I really want to talk about being wise. If you remember in yesterday's devotion, we looked at Colossians chapter 4 and verse 5, and the first thing it said there in relationship to those who are outside or lost is that we are to walk in wisdom. We need to walk in wisdom. Uh, some translations say to walk in discernment. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in us. It gives us a discerningness about whether to continue or to be guarded or to proceed. It's also discerning and wisdom and knowing what to say and when to say it and what to do. It involves all of these things. But in this passage in Matthew, this idea of wise as a serpent, Israel, actually, you can do your own search of snakes and serpents in Israel. And there's all kinds of snakes in Israel. But there was a, a, an adder, an asp, that is uh, extremely poisonous there today. The, it is snakes, even our snakes around here, have, a, have an organ. That organ is known as the Jacobson Organ. Now, it's named Jacobson, not because of Jacob in the Bible, but it's named Jacobson because of the, the um, discoverer that discovered that these snakes have this organ. This organ allows them to smell and to sense um, what's around them. Um, it gives them an advantage over their prey. And in this scripture, Jesus says, you need to have that kind of discerning. Well, we have the Holy Spirit. Again, just like in Colossians, that is our gift as believers. We are to depend upon the Holy Spirit. We need to be wise as we enter into a relationship with lost people that we trust and yield to the Holy Spirit. That's why it's dangerous for me to give you uh, some must. That would be legalism. You, 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 uh, you do this in every relationship with the lost people. Well, you can't do that um, because the Holy Spirit will guide you and direct you. It's like uh, Philip. I mean, he, he just finished one place. He's on a mountaintop, and all of a sudden God says, Hey, you see that man on that chariot? You run and catch up to him. And he gets, ends up on, that was, that was that extra wisdom that came from the Holy Spirit that he was able to get in. Or Peter, after the vision of the sheets, hears the knock on the door and it's the, it's the uh, servants of Cornelius. And Peter understands, hey, this, that vision was about this. And he, and he goes, you and I need to be wise and the way we are wise as Christians, we must yield or listen for the discernment of the Holy Spirit in our life, not only for what we say, what we do, but even how we approach 
There are times when the Holy Spirit may warn you. Uh, because of that, I don't think that every Christian is meant to enter into a relationship with every lost person. But there are some that should enter into a relationship with a lost person that you are not supposed to. Only being wise, walking in wisdom, means walking in the Spirit. And then you will know, you will have not only the words, but the timing will be right, and the presence will be right. Love you, Sue Chevron.